They said the truth won't survive beside the lies that maintain the decaying faces of this. And like you can make fun of literally everything Hold the Truth Hostage does. There's like there's no end to the laughs that we can get out of Hold the Truth Hostage. But do I think he's the devil? Yes. You know what I mean? I definitely don't think he's not the devil. Hold the truth hostage. So what? So he's going to hell. How long will it be for um, Hold the Truth says, hands up, don't shoot? Just saying. Uh, oh I, I do honestly oh, think. Man. Is this you? Yeah, this is the real me. Okay, good, man. How you doing? Hey, good, good. Yeah, no, I was um to see the Black Pill guys as that guy hold the truth i call him and please don't get offended by this this is my favorite line from hold the house negro because he's a house negro on that panel and i don't care if anyone gets offended that's what he is i grew up a white guy growing up in new zealand just as it is you know the very first thing people will say when they they see me jump into this like a, onto this stream or whatever they'll they'll be like oh you know he's alt-right or some sort of underlying racial acrimony which couldn't be further from the case and i'm a very a very liberal guy very accepting yeah, no, I've got a lot of strong words to say to say about these guys, and I was really happy that you invited me on to chat. Um, high value black men. There, there just isn't a lot. Um, I grew up a white guy growing up in New Zealand, just as it is. You know, the very first thing people will say when they they see me jump into this, like a, onto this stream or whatever, they'll they'll be like, "Oh, you know, he's alt right or some sort of underlying racial acrimony," which couldn't be further from the case. And I'm a very a very liberal guy, very accepting. Black man. There it is, man. There it is, right off the fucking top. The fucking black card. How long will it be for um, Hold the Truth says, hands up, don't shoot. Just saying. Uh, oh, God. I, I do honestly oh, think. Man. Pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black. I'm black pill, I'm ill with this will. 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 It's so important, guys. So, so, so important. By the way, women are the majority of voters in the United States. Like the uh Female content creators help the manosphere be balanced and prevent the formation of cults. She has agreed to an alliance with me and other balanced content creators who call out the bullshit and hypocrisies. I look forward to see the cat. How long will it be for um, Hold the Truth says, hands up, don't shoot? Just saying. Uh, oh, God. I, I, I do honestly oh, think... Man. Hey everybody, what's up man? It's Hold the Truth Hostage, where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies, we would hold the truth hostage. Now, I spoke to somebody, you know, and um, you know, I got some people I know that's married, you know what I'm saying? And uh, somebody told me, you know what man? Since you all black pilled and you ain't gonna be emotional about it, you know what I mean? You just gonna tell it like it is. You know, how can a marriage survive today? You know, because you know what I mean? I, I've done a lot of videos, man. You know, a lot of videos. So the big, big question becomes is how do you have a successful, how do you have a successful marriage in this climate, you know, now I've never been married, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie or say any of that, you know, but, you know, like any man who's about absolute logics, I look at things the way they are. And as a black pilled man, I, I don't put emotions into it. I just look at it for what it is. So the big question is, how can you have a successful marriage today? The way I look at it, you know, a successful marriage now is is literally it's if both couples agree that, you know, it's them against the world. You know, it's it's really them against the world. You know, 
That used to be a saying you'd hear in movies for, you know, some dramatic sayings. You know, it's you and your wife against the world. But now it actually is. I mean, it actually is. Because the narrative from uh, the corporations and the narrative from the government, you know what I'm saying, is all about destroying that marriage. You know what I'm saying? You turn on TV, you know, if you still watch TV, you know what I'm saying? What was her name? I think she was, uh, she, she was, she was, she's a host on some TV show. You know, she got divorced and said she graduated. She graduated that her divorce was a graduation and it should be celebrated that she got divorced. You know what I'm saying? So. The thing is this, the thing that's happening, and uh, you need to understand this, is that the whole narrative from media to television, everything's about destroying the marriage. Because the biggest problem with marriage in today's society is that the marriage features a man as a source of stability. As a foundation of stability. You know what I'm saying? That That's the biggest issue with marriage. Because if you notice everything else. When it comes to uh, what they're pushing now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when they push gay marriage. They, they don't say. They're not divisive about that. You know, not at all. Be it a lesbian, gay marriage. Whatever, you know. Alphabet, LGBT, whatever marriage, you won't, you won't see a narrative to destroy that, you know, because those type of marriages do not feature the enemy of the state and the enemy of the state is a straight man. A straight man in a relationship is the enemy because the problem with the woman having a straight man in her life is that that straight man provides stability authority that isn't from the government you know what i'm saying it isn't from the government it isn't from the corporations you know you know what i've learned i was talking to a good friend of mine and um i was thinking about what pc means you know they tell us it's politically correct but i don't think it means that I think PC means politically corporate. You know what I'm saying? Politically corporate. I mean, that's what most of the corporations are pushing anyway. A political message. But to get back to marriage. To get back to how does a marriage survive? You know what I'm saying? How would a marriage survive today? You know what I'm saying? How does How do you have a successful marriage? Well, to have a successful marriage is that, and, and it's, it's extremely difficult to have a successful marriage because the man does not have enough resources to counteract everything that's being pushed to destroy the marriage. You know what I'm saying? Trillions of dollars on, uh, on advertisement that's being pushed to making a woman subservient to the man in her life, a negative, you know what I'm saying? If she's subservient to a man in her life, it's seen as slavery. It's seen as her not being independent. But if she's subservient to her boss, her career, it's seen as independence. That's right. It's independent when you need to, when a woman needs to serve the corporations and the government, you know what I'm saying? That's true independence. It isn't serving the man that she trusts, she sleeps with, closes her eyes, you know what I'm saying? Potentially will have children with. That is an independence and that isn't freedom. That's slavery. That's being subservient. You know what I'm saying? The thing is this, if, uh, if um, to have a successful marriage, you know, it's really on the, the point of the woman, you know what I'm saying? Because the woman has a legal advantage in the marriage. So for the marriage to succeed, it's really in her hands. It's on her, you know what I'm saying? It's in her hands 
it's not really on the man's hands. It's in her hands to decide whether that marriage will succeed or not, you know, because she has the legal advantage. The thing about a man being married is that if your wife that's with you doesn't understand that everything outside of you too is designed to destroy your relationship. That means her friends. That means anybody trying to influence her to walk away from her, the authority of her husband, the authority of them being together, you know what I'm saying, is the enemy. That means television shows where they purposely dumb down the father, make him look like an idiot. You know, television shows that purposely promote being disrespectful to the husband and so on. Then, you know what I'm saying, even uh, the psychiatrists, the psychologists that want you to have some type of, uh, I forget, some type of marital therapy, you know what I'm saying, marital therapy to fix your marriage. When in reality, there's nothing wrong. If The thing is this, marriage is very simple. It's built on a routine. It's going to be boring. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be boring because you want to know what boring is and, and why they want to keep pushing it's boring. A routine, safety, protection. Why do they keep pushing this as boring when the thing about when you're in a safe and a routine situation, let's say a man and a woman, you know, they're married, whatever, and they live in a nice, safe community. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has about the same looking house. Now, now they'll advertise that's boring, that's that's dull. But in reality, that's actually the most fun thing because now that you, the man and the woman know they're in a safe community, they can actually surprise each other without worrying. They can actually plan vacations, you know, fun things to do. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the times I've seen couples that their marriages are dull and destructive it's because one maybe maybe the woman you know what i'm saying it's because of the narratives isn't putting effort into creating surprises and fun that doesn't burn the bank account and leave them potentially destitute you know but the thing is this for a successful marriage it's really it really leans on the wife. It leans on the wife. Will she take her husband, that leadership, that stability, that authority over all these strangers that are television corporations or friends? Uh, you know what I'm saying? The government. Will she take her husband over all of that? Trillions of dollars. Oh, this is part two. So, you know, like I was saying, will the wife take her husband above it all because the thing about the thing now now that the the legal advantage is in the wife's hands it's in the woman's hands when a man gets married he basically surrenders his manhood legally you know what i'm saying legally he's he's gone he's no longer a man you know because she now has all the legal advantages you know what i'm saying she has the ability to win everything so a successful marriage, it comes on the woman. It comes on the woman now. You know what I'm saying? Will she be faithful? Will she look at everything outside of that marriage as the source to decay it, to destroy it? Because, you know, it's funny how you watch TV, <clears throat> you watch TV and they're telling a woman, that, you know, you're a slave and to be submissive to the man she sleeps with that will protect her. The man that will be there before the police. The man that will be there before her boss, before her, her co-workers, her husband. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even if he's not there, he will drop everything to come to her. You know what I'm saying? To come to her, her aid. He might even lose his job. If he hears, yo, my wife is in there, my wife's in trouble, he leaving that job, he's driving at full speed to get to her. You know what I'm saying? The cops, they got to balance the whole town. So even if she is in danger, they got to choose the most, uh, 
biggest threat. You know what I'm saying? It's not about first call, first serve. Nah, I think it's whatever's the worst threat. I mean, a woman screaming because she heard something in her house or a gang war, a gang fight in a shootout. Which one you think is more important to the cops? At a shootout, whatever. So a lot of this is in the woman's hands. You know what I'm saying? It's in the woman's hands to decide whether she will remain married or not. You know, and, and, and there's so many things at play, but I'll focus on health. You know, the woman, while married, should not give up on her physique. She should not be gaining as much weight and just while well, she's married, now she's married, she could just eat all day and, you know, destroy her body. She should not be doing that. Not Not because of health reasons, but because... You're married to a man that's willing to give you, you know, his life to protect you. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't want to give that man the best version of yourself, then that just means you want the marriage to be destroyed. You know what I'm saying? You want it to be decayed and destroyed. If you don't give your best physical appearance to your husband, and of course, you're, you're most respectful. You know what I'm saying? Another aspect is beyond the physique is the mentality. You know what I'm saying? I've seen some, uh, I know some guys that's been married. The wife's yelling at him, arguing with him. You know what I mean? Doing things she would never do her, to her boss. She would never do to her coworkers. It, it's, it, when you look at it from a logical standpoint, it's mind boggling that this woman with a man that will tr that's willing to sacrifice his life for her that's who he showed disrespect the most you know what i'm saying it, the person that has the most personal connection to her you know so you know it, that that respect comes into it you know that she has she should respect her man above all above the job you are hired you know what i'm saying they push this narrative that we're a family at the job you know what I mean? Should seek to be the most respectful to her husband. I mean, the man literally married you and swore till death do us part. You know, your boss ain't do that. Your boss ain't say, well, you got this job till death do you lose this job. Till death do you part with this job. No. That's why they keep pushing this career thing and you shouldn't be submissive to no man. Because if a woman's submissive to a man, it means she is aware that the man is more worthy and more important to be submissive to than her employers and the corporations and consumerism. You know what I'm saying? So it's really up to the woman. A, a, a lot of what's going on with marriage and all that, it's up to the woman. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, what I'm saying she has the political, she has the political power, the legal advantage, you know, what I'm saying, but it's her looking at her husband, looking at him and saying, yeah, it is us against the world because the current narrative of the society we live in is to destroy that heterosexual relationship between a man and a woman, destroy it because the problem is if a woman takes a man's authority, she will start living by these rules before God, before the government, before the corporations, before her job. It's the man in her life because that man is the first option. He's always the first option. Danger comes at her first option. You know what I'm saying? She's confused about something. That man's going to be the first option to be there. You know what I'm saying? He'll be the first option to help her try to talk to her and stabilize her mentally, physically. You know what I'm saying? He's the first option. Because the thing is, if a woman puts a man in her life first, he's going to be above everything. Above God, above Jesus. Because guess what? If somebody's breaking into your home, you know what I'm saying? It ain't Jesus that's going to stop that person. It's going to be your man. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going to be God with a prayer. If somebody's coming to your house with a gun or whatever, 
or someone's threatening you and harassing you, a prayer ain't going to save the day. It's going to be the man in her life, you know? So the thing about a successful marriage now, you know what I'm saying, especially in today's society, the overage, you know, which is established since the 2010s, is that you have to understand, especially the woman, she has to understand that it is, everything's designed to rip her away from her man. You know what I'm saying? Rip her away from his authority, respecting him. You know what I'm saying? And trying to judge him from perspectives that society's telling you. You know what I mean? There's some women, uh, what is it? She made more money than her husband. Yeah, you make more money. I mean, the system is designed to hire more women to fulfill a quota and get certain things. Of course, you're going to get more jobs and potentially get more money. But here's the other thing where the money doesn't equate to making her more important than her husband. If someone's breaking into the house, you think you making more money than your husband's going to stop them? You know what I'm saying? And and another thing is, even if you do make more money, nobody has to respect that. Other men don't got to respect that. The difference when a man has his money, like a man, one saying I like to say is this, okay, there's a woman with $5,000 in her bank account, and there's a man with $100 in his bank account. You know, the average person who's been corrupted by feminism and corrupted by lack of logic will say, well, the woman, the woman has more money. She's, she's richer. Nope. The truth is that man is wealthier because other men have to respect him and his money. Other men have to think about the risk of trying to take money from that man. If a woman's walking outside with five grand, you know what I'm saying? How much will a man lose to take that 5000 from her? You know what I'm saying? Versus trying to take $100 from another man that could potentially overpower him. You know what I'm saying? Beat him. Beat him within an inch of his life. You know? The difference with um, when a man has money, you have to respect. It. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to you don't want to deal with what it means to try to take it from him. When a woman has money, you know what I mean? Ain't no man afraid of her because she got some money, you know? So to me, it's really the survival of a marriage. It's really up to the woman, you know what I'm saying? And it, as you can see with society, a lot of women buy into in mass, you know, over 80% of the divorces filed are by the women. So a lot of the women buy in mass out, you know, exterior forces, Consumerism, corporations, government influence, media, which leads to the destruction of the marriage. So the marriage is up to the woman. This is the last one, you know, but uh, with the marriage situation. So it's really up to the woman, like I was saying. It's up to her, you know, and as shown, as seen, you know, when you do, when you do the, um, if you compare and contrast, Notice before no-fault divorce, you know what I'm saying, marriage was at an all-time high. Divorce was damn near non, non-existent, you know what I'm saying, it was extremely low. But as soon as you put no-fault divorce and the fate of the marriage is now in women's hands, divorce is skyrocketed, you know what I'm saying, skyrocketed, you know. So if you look at it, you know what I'm saying, you see the narrative, you see what's going on. Now, another thing, another reason it's on the woman is that you got to look at everything that's happening, you know what I'm saying, with today's society and all that. But now the woman has legal advantage, you know what I'm saying, and women are far more emotional than men, as they should be, because in being the weaker sex... That's all they can do is be more emotional. They can express themselves more emotionally and be more controlled by their emotions because that's the highest level of output they can do. They can't compete with men on a physical spectrum. You know what I mean? So uh, women are far more emotionally driven. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is 
when it comes to marriages, now the woman has the lead. She's the lead. You know what I'm saying? She's in the lead. She has all the legal advantages. Now, the man, when, when a woman has all the legal advantages in a marriage, the man can't check her. The man can't filter out her emotions anymore. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you look at a married couple and you look at a couple before they were married, when they were dating, the man could actually somewhat filter out her emotions. He could, he could, he could tell her to, you know, he could calm her down or she would know better than to get over emotional because the threat of that man leaving is there. She gets too emotional, too abusive. That man could leave. That man isn't binded to her by a, a marital contract. You know what I'm saying? When they're just dating, when they're in the dating phase, a lot of a lot of people that have surface level knowledge, you know, which, which will say, well, you know, when they were to before they were married, uh, they had they were better together. And, you know, there was more passion. Yeah, because she didn't have the legal advantage that man could leave. No fault divorce. What the law, no fault divorce created is a situation where a man is more valuable to a woman, you know, has more control of her when he can leave her. You know what I'm saying? When he can leave her, he has more control. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of women, when they're dating a man, they tend to be a lot more respectful. You know what I'm saying? A lot more respectful than when they marry that man because when she's dating that man, she knows he could get up, he could leave, or he could ghost and never show back up. You know what I mean? So the threat of him leaving keeps her in check. You know what I mean? So now she's married, that threat of him leaving isn't there. So a lot of the marriage has to do now is can a woman keep her emotions in check and, and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Keep them in check because a lot of divorces happen are based on emotion. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she, she doesn't feel the same anymore. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't feel the excitement anymore. Even though you're married to this man, you should try to be, you should try to make it exciting too. You know, a lot of women that leave marriage situations say, well, they're not excited. It's not fun. When these women aren't even putting any effort to do none of that. You know what I'm saying? They've now decided that, okay, I'm just gonna, since you have, she has the legal advantage, this man has to entertain her and keep her interests like some type of chimp, some type of monkey on a freaking, uh, bicycle, you know? So a lot of it comes into the woman has to keep her emotions in check because you got to notice, and uh, you, you've seen it where a woman was in a great, stable relationship, and one day she got mad, and she just threw it all away, threw it all away. And the other reason you see that a woman's over-emotional is when children are involved, when children are involved. You know what I'm saying? If children are what tells you how much sway emotion has on a woman. You know what I'm saying? How much sway her emotions have on her. The fact that a woman just feels some type of way will just literally leave the father of her child. Will, will, she will literally destroy the stability of her child's life. You know what I mean? That child is half of his mom, half of his is her is his father you know what i'm saying as in that child is not whole if he's not around both of them you know what i mean and that child becomes extremely destructive because if all you know is destruction in the household you know what i'm saying then then who cares about the world outside of that you know who cares about it you know what i mean who cares about the world outside of your home when all you know is destruction from your household. You know what I mean? So who cares? You know what I mean? Who who's gonna care? 
And, and when you see this, I've seen it where a woman had a great situation with the father. He's not abusive. He's not doing nothing. He comes from work. He comes home. You know what I'm saying? But she literally would walk away from that. Make her child fatherless. That's why one of the biggest lies in America you'll hear every day from a single mom who left the father for no reason is that she put her child, she puts her children first. She'll say she put her children first. How do you put your children first when you when you take away their father? You know what I'm saying? Take them away from her father, their fathers. Giselle Bunchen was putting her children first when she kidnapped them and took them away from their father, Tom Brady, for no reason. You know what I'm saying? But she knows she has the legal advantage to when to take the children. If Brady took the children without her approval, that's kidnapping. But if she takes them without his approval or uh, any say from him, that's just a concerned mother. You know what I mean? So it's really about a woman keeping her emotions in check and looking at making more stable and logical decisions. Because to me, divorce and, uh, you know, women leaving the father of their children tells you, especially when it's there's no reasons behind it, it shows you how much their emotions control themselves. You know what I'm saying? Another thing you'll see from a lot of these women is they become enslaved to the holidays, the media, and the corporations that a man must spend this money, you know, to celebrate the holidays. He must spend, he must do this, they must consume. Without understanding that, you know, these resources will be needed for the house, the children, you know what I'm saying? Either you're going to need them just in case something happens. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of women be, are, are absolutely consumers because their emotions drive them. You know what I'm saying? If the, them, the advertisement to consume makes them feel some type of way, they're going to go by. They're going to go by at the, at the destruction of their family stability. You know, get your children the latest Jordans. Get a six-month-old child some Jordans when he's going to grow out of them in like two to three months. You know what I'm saying? Go on a lot of vacations. You know what I'm saying? Place the resources on consumption rather than the stability of the family, college funds, and all that. So a lot of, so the fate of a relationship, a marriage, it's in the hands of the woman. It's not in the hands of the man, because as soon as the man got married, he decided that the relationship was no longer in his hands. How long will it be for, um, hold the truth, says hands up, don't shoot. Just saying. Uh, okay. I, I do honestly oh, think. Man. So important, guys. So, so, so important. By the way, women are the majority of voters in the United States. Like that. Pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black. I'm black pill, I'm ill with this will. 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 They said the truth won't survive beside the lies that maintain the decaying faces of this place. Female content creators help the manosphere be balanced and prevent the formation of cults. She has agreed to an alliance with me and other balanced content creators who call out the bullshit and hypocrisies. I look forward to see the cat. How long will it be for, um, hold the truth, says hands up, don't shoot. Just saying. Uh, oh, God. I, I do, I honestly oh, think. Man.